to part two of Ephesians chapter two. Again, I'm Don Chamberlain, your host, and let's meet the crew, Mr. Donald Culp, who's also sharing the word tonight or this afternoon here. Hello, and Mr. Michael will slide down to Houston with Mr. Michael Lewis. Howdy. And we'll go out with fruit and nuts out to California, out to Chandra and her daughter. Hello. Okay, so quick word of prayer here. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day. We're thankful for your word, and we're thankful that John's going to share his knowledge of Ephesians chapter 2 with us. And I thank you for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Mr. Culp, it's all yours. All right. Thank you, Don. And if you're just joining us, we were in Ephesians chapter 2, still are, and we're continuing in chapter Ephesians, in chapter 2 of Ephesians. And we started out by dividing chapter 2 into four sections, and we're in the second section, which is verses 4 through 10, and we're on verses 8 and 9. And verses 8 and 9 says that we are saved by faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Now, we are saved uh, by grace, through faith. Verse 8, saved by grace, through faith, not of yourselves, Every for it is a gift of God. false faith system is based on salvation through. by work. Saved by grace. It's... Uh, not of merit. There's nothing you can do to earn your salvation. I mean, what could you possibly do? Neil, Dib, Al, Dunk. <laughs> if you could do More that, longer. somebody could do it better, and then somebody could boast. It just doesn't work. Besides, it says it's by grace, and grace is a gift. It's divine favor. The word is charis in the Greek text, and charis is the root word of the word gift, which is charismata, which is the word used as or used for the gift of God. And we know the gift of God is Holy Spirit. And we all have that when we believe Jesus is Lord, confessing that God raised the problem from the then dead. becomes the or the question becomes, how can we save be saved by grace through faith when James says that faith I think this is a real stumbling yeah. stone for a lot of people. Because in James two twenty six it says it says that we're saved. Or it says that uh, faith. We know what works. Works, are. works is effort. Something that so you have what to is do. faith? We need to know what faith is so that we can get the contrast because they are definitely in contrast. Faith it's is trust simply trust. In something, and it's basically our response to a promise. To a promise, God it's says promise. He'll never leave us. How do we respond? Okay. Then I'm going to believe him, and I'm going to not be afraid of him. Can't earn a gift. Faith is trusting in a promise. I guess a good example of this is we can, you can hear it in uh, session five of One Day with the Creator, our foundational class, and John Lynn gives an excellent example by telling the story of how he fan and has never been to the NBA finals, and he says that uh, would. He uses the example of a friend to the NBA Finals front row. He says, John, would you like so, to go? And he says, yes. He says, Here's the promise. The guy says, be out in front of your house by 6 p.m. I will pick you up and take you to the game. There's the promise. Oh, so now John has one of two way, in two ways. He can say, okay, believe I'm going he's to, going to do that. So I'm going to get in front of my house and wait for him to pick me up. Or he can respond and say, I don't believe this guy. Faith is how we respond to the promise. And in this example, uh, faith is this, and it's faith is, not only in this example, but always, it's the simplest thing God could ever ask us to do. Simplest thing. In, this, in the example of John, uh, his wife could open the door and push him out of the door into the front lawn, and he would be in front of the house. Responded to the promise. Is he at the game yet? 
No. Where is it? He's in front of the house. It's up to his friend to then fulfill his promise, picking him up and taking him to the game. That is how it works. Now, it also works this way in the Bible. Paul had faith. Turn to Acts chapter 27 in your Bibles, in verse 25. Now, I have written this down. I'm reading this from the NIV because it's, I think, better understandable. So, in Acts chapter 27 and verse 25, Paul says this. So, keep up your courage, men. Why? For I have faith in God that it will be just as he told me. That's faith. It's not the way Paul wants it to be. It's the way God said it will be. And that's how Paul is lining up his life to the words that God says. Cool. That's very faith. cool. So we are saved by grace. He's John is at the game not by his merits, but because of the merits of the person who is his friend who made the promise. In the same way, when we confess Jesus as Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, that does not get us saved. That's works. That puts us in God position to save us, which he will do when and Christ comes back. Until then, we have the token, the down payment, the sign, if you will, as we read in Ephesians 1, verse 13, of Holy Spirit. Very cool. All right. Now, moving right along here. So, that ends the second section of chapter 2 of Ephesians. So, according to that, we're saved by grace. God's That's God's part of the promise. And we're saved through faith. That's our part of the promise. It's We're not robots for Jesus. We have a God always goes play. first. Then now we we're respond. into section three. Section three of chapter two is just two verses long. But there is a lot in these two verses. So I'm going to read the verses and then I'm going to talk about them just for a few moments. All right. Verse 11. I'm reading out of the King James Version. Wherefore? As a result of all of that, what's the wherefore, therefore, because of all this we've just read so far, remember, that's a command, remember, that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God bad. in the world. Okay, so that's the two verses. That's the section. That's it. But it's a command. Remember. Think back, you guys who are now born again, who were Gentiles. What was going on there? You were Gentiles. Why? By birth. It's the only way. You know, there was two groups of people. Jews. And everybody else. And if you're a Jew, you were a Jew by lineage, by birth. And if you were not, it was because you weren't born as a descendant of Israel, Jacob, Abraham, all those guys. Abraham, we got Isaac, Isaac, we got Jacob. God changed his name to Israel. Israel had 12 sons, they became the 12 tribes of Israel. If you weren't in that family reunion, you were a Gentile. You okay. were an birth. alien to the citizenship citizenship of Israel. You weren't part of the family. You weren't part of that nation. You were an alien. And as foreigner. an alien and a foreigner, you Privy were not to all the blessings or whatever was going on in that family. You, know, you were an alien. You didn't get the tax it was a, or whatever. It's a flesh thing. It was automatic. Okay. Now I need for you to turn to Romans chapter 4. Very important, because it said that they were uncircumcision. They were called the uncircumcision by the circumcision. Circumcision is a big deal to the Jews. All the Jews were circumcised, the males, and the Gentiles were not. So what's going on there? 
in Romans chapter 4, verse 8. I'm going to read three or four verses out of the NIV. Blessed it says this, is the one whose sin the Lord will them. never. I'd say that's true. Verse 9, is this blessedness, however, only for the circumcised? In other or words, for the Jews? also for the uncircumcised? We have, s- we have been saying that Abraham was faith. credited to him as righteous. You know, Abraham, he was 90 years old, didn't have any kids. God said, you're going to have a kid. He had faith in God's word, had a kid, had Isaac. Okay, that's what that's all about. Verse Under what 10. circumstances was it credited? Was it after he was circumcised? Or before. It was not after, but before. Verse 11, and he received circumcision as a sign of the a righteousness seal. that he had by faith, by believing God, while trusting God. he was still on Burning those Jews' ears right here. So then he is the father of all who believe, but have not been circumcised, or, or circumcised in order that righteousness might be credited to them. Now, it's a, it was a sign. Abraham, his, his was, faith was counted as righteousness. Then he was circumcised. The circumcision was a sign to him that God would keep his promise. We too now, this is what this is all building up to, is the next section and the last section of the chapter. Now, this in this day and time, the Gentiles who believe Jesus Lord, God raised him from the dead, they have been given Holy Spirit, which is a sign to their righteousness. It's given to them. It's, this is awesome. <laughs> Ephesians 1.13. Flip back a page if you're in Ephesians. Ephesians 1.13 says, In whom ye also trusted. Talking about the Gentiles. After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, trusted in God, you were sealed with that what Holy is Spirit of the promise. Manifestation of that Spirit. How do we know we have that Spirit within us? Speaking in tongues. It's a sign to us that we have the righteousness of God. Oh, amazing. So in those two verses, the Gentile saints are to remember. Remember that they were aliens of Israel by birth to the flesh, but because now, verse 13, they are no longer aliens or foreigners. They're going now to be they're members of a new thing. And now we get into the last section of chapter they 2. They call it this. The, it's about 10 verses. And this is all about our present condition by super abounding grace. And it's super abounding grace because... God's going to do a new thing. He is going to, first of all, reveal the secret that he's been keeping for ages and, and for generations. He's going to re- start to reveal it here. And uh, it's super abounding because it's grace. Uh, he didn't have to do it. He's doing it because he wants it to. It starts here and it us. continues into chapter 3. But this is now the running start into chapter 3. And we're just going to go. Through these the greatest truth here. in the entire Word of God, the Chewy Caramel Center. Here we go. Verse 13. But now, but in contrast, now, remember then, now, in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both. Jew and Gentile, both new one, man. so making peace. No more conflict between Jews, Gentiles. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why aren't you circumcised? You should be. You should, you aren't. Blah blah blah. They were like this all the time. No more. So making peace. Verse fifteen, having abolished in his flesh even the, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain, of two, one new man, so making peace. Verse 16, a little bit more information. And, in addition, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, 
Verse 17, And came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh, or dear. For through him we both have access by one Spirit, that's the new birth, Holy Spirit, we've been reading about it, unto who? The Father. This is new stuff. We have never heard this before. You always had to go through the high priest. Not everybody could go into the Holy of Holies. Not anymore. Verse 19. Now. Time word. Now. Now therefore you are no more strangers. Nope. No more foreigners. Nope. What then? But, in contrast, you are fellow citizens with the saints, the holy ones, and of the household of God. Family, brothers, with a father, a big brother, and brothers and sisters. It's a family thing now. It's not Jews, Gentile. We're all one. Verse 20. Even more here. And, in addition, and we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. This is tremendous. God now dwells in us. It's God in Christ in us. We have access to the Father. We are all one in Christ. We are all one in Christ. We are fitly, we fit like fit together. Every piece, every joint supplies, every part of the body fits together perfectly as one unit. Uh, it talks about us being compared to a building. This is all kind of referring back to the temple days. The temple was a foreshadowing of Christ in the future. And what he was no longer us. Two different people. We're no longer Jews. We're no longer Gentiles. When you believe Jesus Christ is Lord, God raised him from the dead, you are born again, a new creation in Christ. In the first section, second section, we learned that we are God's masterpieces. I don't remember if I've mentioned that or not, but we are his masterpieces created in Christ Jesus. Uh, we are his workmanship, I believe the King James calls it, which is the word masterpiece. The, and that word is only used one other time in the Bible, and it refers to the creation, all of creation, the earth. It's just amazing. So that is section four. We're no longer aliens or foreigners. One We're new all man. Christians. First time Christians on the scene was since Pentecost, and that's what this is all about. This is our running start into chapter 3, the great secret of God, the sacred secret, which is revealed in all its glory in chapter 3, the chewy caramel center of the heart of God's Word. So there you go. That's chapter 2 of Ephesians. Bless you. I hope you, love, hope you learn a little bit about God and His Word in there. Love you. Well, thanks, Don. That I mean, was great. You're right. Ephesians two is the the, the springboard. Into Mike, three, you got anything you want to say about all of this? You're wow. muted, by the way. I, I, wow. I mean, I like the way Don even put it in his notes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's big. It's huge. Never before revealed in chapter three. Well, it'll all be out there. Exposed. Right. <laughs> Sandra, you got anything to add into all of this? Um, I, I want to advise people out there. I don't know if you could. I don't know if you switched back and forth between me or not, because I'm sure you can see my distractions. But I, I think this lesson should. I mean, like all lessons, but this lesson of the sacred secret should definitely not be taken lightly. Uh, definitely um, try to get yourself that nice bit of quiet time when you do this study so you can really soak it in because <laughs> that's that's what I need for sure um, but even I mean but even just what you can grab at all it, it's just it's a blessing it's a blessing to know that 
um, just the Romans 10, 9, the fact that, you know, we're one. Um, it, it was a wonderful blessing, positive teaching. So we, just what, whatever you can get from it is awesome. But when you have that nice little silent time, you it, it becomes so much more powerful. So that's my advice when you do your little self-study time. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the one thing I did want to bring up, there is one thing. It talks about the middle wall of partition being uh, torn down. Yes. There it's specifically speaking about us and the Jews. But it wasn't just us. And, that middle wall of partition wasn't just between us and the Jews. It was between us and God. And if you go to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, as he died, it says that there was a great earthquake and that the uh, veil in the temple was torn apart from the top to the bottom. That veil was what surrounded. So it was not Holy. only the breaking down of the wall between us and the Jews, it was the <laughs> tearing down of the veil which separated man. Because as Jesus oh, Christ died, we had been yep, reconciled. No longer strangers and foreigners. We're able to access <laughs> the Father by way of our of the Spirit that He's given us. Amen. Because in the Old Testament, the, if you wanted to go to God, you had to go to the high priest, and then he had to go to yeah. The he Holy only got to go in there once a year. Yeah, and he only got to go in there once a year. So you and had to <laughs> you couldn't go directly to God. There was a route right. you had to go. Yeah. Uh, and when he went in, they had to put a rope around him in case he died while he was in there. That way they could pull him out because they weren't allowed to. It must to have happened there. once, or nearly so, because why else would they have come up with such a crazy idea? Right. <laughs> Somebody must have passed out once or something, or maybe they did die. Did say yeah. that something they happened anywhere, but. Yeah, then they had to wait till the next month when the new officer took over. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is, Go in there and get him. I'm not going in there. <laughs> you want to die, you go. Because <laughs> that's basically what God said the consequence was. If you did this stuff wrong, yeah. you're going to die. Yeah. Um, okay. Michael, why don't you close us out with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful and awed by the way you've shined your word out on us and just made available all this information in this great epistle that you originally gave with Paul and you continue to work through the last 2,000 years within the great body of Christ that stands faithful and works those things that are attained in the mystery. We're thankful just and awed that... <laughs> Why us? We're just so humbled by the information that has been granted to us by your grace and your mercy. And we're just so privileged in this day and this time not only to have it for ourselves, but to be able to share it with others. And I just thank you, Father, that as this word goes out and as this information goes out, that there are your people are out there that truly want to know where your heart lies in this administration and that they're just found and they're just brought to your word so that they can see it for themselves and grow up in Christ the way that you mean for each of us. Too. I thank you for the health and well-being of every individual here and every individual that this word touches where you just minister life within us and them where they can walk powerfully with what you put inside of us in that wonderful seat of Christ name of your son Jesus Christ amen. amen amen well time to say goodbye everyone whoops there we go time to say goodbye bye, bye. bye everybody we'll see you Thursday night at 9 p.m.